Imagine a plane that combines the fuselage, similar to a glider, engine from a big PA-32, ease of use on par with a modern LSA, and cabin interior and cockpit of a track race car. Well, I'm pretty sure that you are thinking of something very similar to the plane that one small but mighty manufacturer from Slovenia has been building for the past 11 years. Constantly improving the technology and manufacturing throughout these years, they achieved such perfection that allowed them to fly a thousand miles, cruise at 200 knots, and carry four people with their luggage. But how was it possible? Let's find out in this video. Welcome to the Big Metal Birds. And in this video, we dive deep into the technological advancements of modern aviation and review the Pipistrelle Panthera. In the mid-1980s, Ivo Boskarol, a Slovenian pilot and designer, was secretly creating hang gliders in his small studio. Why secretly? See, at that time, the Slovenian government strictly prohibited any kind of private aircraft. Yeah, exactly at the time, when there was a boom of private aviation in the U.S. But Boscarol's goal was to manufacture and sell them to neighboring Italy, where hang gliding was rapidly gaining popularity and was fully authorized. Pipistrel, especially in its early days, wasn't that popular in the U.S. as the American pilots had their own trusted brands. But in Europe, the market was welcoming new manufacturers. Shortly after his first sales, Boscarol worked with a small team of his friends on a few ultralight trike models. One of them, called the Basic, was rapidly gaining popularity and later became the first one to be serially produced. Later, the Plus was added to the line in 1990, the Spider in 1992, and the Twister in 1998. In 1992, the company was officially registered with Vita Lorbeck as the first manager. Fun fact, the Pipistrelle actually comes from the Italian word Pipistrello, which means bat. This nickname for his creations Evo got because of the test flights he did at night, because apparently even that was prohibited by Slovenian law. In the mid-1990s, when composite materials became more widely used, the company moved from the production of powered hang gliders to more conventional gliders and powered light aircraft. By the way, we already did a video about another Pipistrelle plane called Virus. This little bird can take you around the world while still being in its ultralight class. Be sure to give it a watch later, but today, let's see what their newest bird can do. If we compare the marketing of Cessna or Piper in the mid-50s and Pipistrelle or Technam in the last few decades, things have changed quite drastically. From the bigger and faster, we ultimately went into the race for efficiency, sustainability, and budget-friendly solutions. Well, if the budget-friendly part might not be where this plane excels, especially knowing that Pipistrelle was acquired by Textron last year, but let's talk about the efficiency. Panthera utilizes all the huge experience of composite material usage Pipistrelle built throughout the decades. Remember? They started with hang gliders with lots of conventional and motorized gliders built later, so these guys know quite a bit about getting weight reduced and glide rate increased. But how did they apply it this time? Panthera's fuselage is almost all composite, reinforced with Kevlar where it matters. And while many LSA these days are almost all carbon and glass fiber, Pipistrelle went the extra mile to make sure that the shape of the fuselage itself is not only light, but aerodynamic. You can trace their glider building past in many little details they used in Panthera. For example, winglets. Quite a rare feature for the small airplane segment, but a must have for a glider. Gear mechanisms are built from titanium, which further decreases the weight. All actuation systems on the aircraft are fully electric, which again, makes the whole plane lighter. Pipistrelle didn't stop just there. Even all the internal and external lighting is LED in this plane. Stepping inside the cabin, you immediately notice the same amount of technology and design work put inside as the outside of the plane. You'll find yourself sitting quite low, not like in Cirrus or Diamond, which we will compare to a bit later. To add, you are also much more laid back compared to DA40, for example. The seats are comfortable, 
with sporty leather trim and stitch patterns quite similar to the Audi RS series seats. Of course, with this amount of innovative and advanced technology Pipistrelle put into the fuselage, they couldn't just put analog instruments inside. You can expect dual G3X Garmin's with GFC 500 Autopilot inside. In terms of baggage, there isn't much, as the rear compartment can fit just a couple of backpacks or carry-ons. Mentioning Cirrus SR22 and Diamond DA40 wasn't unintentional because, apparently, this class of expensive yet highly advanced and modern aircraft that also invested in exceptional safety has quite a few big and trusted names, so let's see if Pipistrel stands up to them. Despite the fuselage resembling a glider, Pipistrel seemed to follow the classic bush plane strategy. Low weight with a powerful engine. But it wasn't their initial idea. The first option was to use the six-cylinder Rotax. In development, at that time, it should have offered 330 horsepower. But the project flopped, and then Pipistrel went to Lycoming, which at that time was working on a modification of the IO390 that could run on motor gasoline. Well, that project flopped too. Well then, in 2014, the only option left was the old IO540, time-tested, 260 horsepower engine that was capable of motor fuel. Worth mentioning, Pipistrel will offer hybrid and fully electric variants, but no one knows when they will even begin the certification process, so I don't think it's worth deep research at this point. When compared to Diamond DA40NG, its engine has just 168 horsepower, but bear in mind, it's their own Austro engine, which means five gallons per hour at 60% power, compared to almost 15 gallons per hour for Pantheris IO540. Cirrus SR22, equipped with Continental IO550N, consumes around 13.5 gallons per hour. On paper, the DA40 is the slowest of three with a max cruise speed of 150 knots. Cirrus claims 183 knots for SR22, and Pipistrelle assures us of 200 knots cruise fully loaded. Well, of course, the speed highly depends on weather and load factors. In terms of range, they all are similar, more or less. You can fly 1,000 nautical miles of an economical cruise on all of them, but what's interesting, in the case of Panthera, they explicitly added that it's over 1,000 miles, even with four adults and luggage on board. In terms of safety, we all know that Diamond holds the record, but much like DA40 and SR22, Panthera comes with the BRS system, an impact absorption construction, and safety cell design. It is interesting that these safety systems are not unique to Panthera, and many other Pipistrelle planes feature full recovery parachute systems and internal roll bar construction, but you gotta pay for that. So. How much does this bird actually cost? Well, we all know, you hear Textron and your wallet shrinks. Back in 2011, Pipistrelle announced the price to be 200 grand without extras. Well, now it's triple that price, again without extras. So, are you willing to pay this much for the modern design and technology or stick to the time-tested machines that, on the other hand, may not have this many safety features? I always love to see how technological advancements of the modern day influence such a conservative field as aviation. Of course, it's up to each pilot to choose his bird, whether it is a time-tested machine or something fresh out of the experimental hangar. All planes are beautiful and unique in their own way. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did researching this plane, and if you did, please leave this video a like and subscribe to our channel fly safe, and until next time.